Hello, everyone. In our second podcast with our guest, who? Uh, Paul Maurer. Yeah. Can you introduce yourself for? Yeah, my name is uh, Paul Maurer. I am a missionary evangelist, and uh, my base is in Orlando, Florida. And um, I've been doing gospel crusades since 2015. And I'm in places like Pakistan, India, Sri Lanka, of course, Bulgaria, all over Africa. I did a one-year apprenticeship for Avenged Daniel Kalenda at Christ for All Nations. And I was trained and equipped in ministry and then got launched me all over the nations. And so I do crusades, revival. I equip the church in evangelism. And yeah, that's kind of like a, very, a really brief version. Yeah, awesome. It's interesting story how actually... Uh, how I actually met Paul um, not uh, long ago after uh, God changed my life, if, I'm, if I can say it like this. Uh, Daniel, a um, friend of ours, Daniel Nestorov, mm -hmm. yeah, he just called me and he just said, do you know, actually, one so nice evangelist will come into town, just, you know, come. And I said, okay, for sure. And, um, you know, Joseph and Vlad, they also told me, you should come, you should come. And I just came. And for the first time, I actually saw Evangelist, who really he was people on his crusades. Yeah. Um, and I was impressed, actually. And uh, I can say that I'm so thankful to your ministry as well, because it helps me believe more in myself that I can actually do it, you know, because today is hard for us to believe that we can evangelize and do all that kind of stuff. And... Mm. and uh, you pray for me this day, and after that, I can say that I saw increasing of my ministry, which is so awesome. Praise God, man. Yeah. So this is actually how I met Paul, and I was like, I should talk with this person. Actually, you were very open, which I so appreciate for that. And um, I'm so thankful for our friendship, and it means a lot for me, I can say. And uh, yeah. That's how I actually met you. And um, we would like to know your story, like uh, how you begin, how God begins to talk to your life uh, when you were small, what happened and share with us. What is your th first thing in your life that changed you? That's a, that's a good question. I think, you know, I grew up in the church. I was Catholic when I was a boy. Catholic? I was Catholic. Well, I actually did not know that. Yeah, I was Catholic awesome. when I was a boy, and then we left the Catholic Church, <laughs> and I was raised in an evangelical, like a spirit-filled church, Assemblies of God. And, you know, anyway... This is a big, like, transition, you know? Yeah, it's a very big transition. Yeah, we went, we had a crazy long journey, um, but I was very religious, so I'd go to Sunday school, go to church. Mm -hmm. But in, like, teenage years, you know, like, I, it's like, I just want to be cool. I wanted to fit into the crowd, you know? And so in my high school... I, I don't know, like, I still had this element of wanting God, but that I really was drawn to the worldly things. And I wasn't bad by worldly standards, mm -hmm. but by God's standards, I definitely had yeah. <laughs> I mean, lots of sin in my life. And I was, you know, this is, I'm 42 years old. I may look a lot younger, but I'm born out too. That's when the internet was first, that's when the internet was first coming up. It was like 95, you know, 96, 97, in those years. And I think it was out of curiosity, but I found myself looking at pornography online you know and it's it's like uh you know when you look at it it, it releases these chemicals and it's just in your body it just makes you you know release this dopamine these chemicals in your brain and it can very easily become an addiction you know yeah and so it turned into like a bad habit and i just found myself kind of trapped it was like a trap in my life mm -hmm. and god felt so far away and i can't remember how long that lasted for maybe a few months or six months i'm not really sure but then my family planned a trip to the Brownsville Revival in mm -hmm. Pensacola, Florida. Awesome. And to be honest, I didn't really care about revival. I didn't care about God's. Have you heard something about the revival before you went there? No, I knew nothing about revival. Oh. And it, it was like surprising. It was very surprising. So I went down to this, this revival. And to be honest, I just wanted to go to the beach. <laughs> they had a real nice beach in Pensacola. And I was excited for, for a vacation. And then when I went to the revival, I saw this massive line with thousands of people waiting to get into church. They waited all day, 12 hours. They waited 12 wow. hours to get into church. Well, it's a little similar like what happens months ago in, uh, I forgot the name. You went there, the revival that was a few months ago. 
in America. You went there a few months ago. The revival. I'm trying to think what what revival you're t- referring to. In America. Uh huh. Uh, what place? In the Methodist Church. Oh, the, the Asbury Revival. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, it was something like that. Thousands yeah. of people waiting to get into church. Wow. And so, you know, they open the doors and the sanctuary is full and just thousands of people. And and then when the worship, play, uh, Linda Cooley started leading worship and it was so anointed. Mm-hmm. You could feel God on it. And then Steve Hill took the mic and started, he's exactly what I need to hear. He's like, there's a cost to following Jesus. The cost is your entire life, everything. Yeah. And he said, you have to repent of your sins. He's like, stop looking at pornography. He's, it's like, give your life to Jesus. And I was so the preacher, The preacher or the piano player says that? Who's the preacher of angel Steve Hill. Oh, wow. And he just preached with such conviction, such power. And, and when he gave the response, the altar call for people to get right with God, I ran to the front with tears streaming down my face. And I said, God, I'll, I repent. I give you my life. I'll go wherever you want me to go. I'll do, what I'll, I'll do whatever you want me to do. My life belongs to you. Wow. And that was a turning. So it was a radical. Like, it was radical. It was a turning point in my life. And it changed me. And then I was on toll and fire for God. I went back to my high school. I started a Bible club called the 180 Club, which is taking a 180 degree turn from sin. Okay. Wow. And back then, I didn't, back then, I didn't understand the love of God as much as I do now. So it was more like turn or burn type messages. Like, you know, get right with God. You know, I didn't understand the love of God so much. And I had to mature in love, but God still used it, right? And so I did that for many years. I was the high, the in in America we had something called um, homecoming king, and so that means the whole school votes on like uh, they have like a a parade and they have a football game and they have the honor of someone to kind of represent the whole class, mm-hmm. represent the whole school really. Mm-hmm. And so so even though I was on fire for God, they voted for me, which is really an honor. I totally on fire for God. I loved everyone. I prayed my guts out for my classmates, and uh, that was homecoming king. And then went to Bible school, and yeah, that's kind of like my some of my journey. Nice, and like how is interesting for me. So in Pensacola, in Pensacola, you met with Daniel Colenda. Is that right? So yeah. So what happened was after I graduated high school, I went down to Pensacola, Florida, and they had the Browns Revival School of Ministry. Nice. And so Daniel was a part of the school of ministry as well. And so you signed up there. Yeah. So, so he was like a, more like an acquaintance back then. We didn't know each other well, but we had a few <laughs> conversations and some group hangouts and stuff. So it's really cool seeing God use him now. Cause back then I knew him when he was eight, 17, 18 years old. Whoa. Just, just a young guy. Just also. <laughs> yeah. 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 But even back then you could see the leadership gift on his life and it's pretty neat. Pretty awesome. Yeah. So there, like, uh, you get to know him personally. Is that right? Because I know, like, you you still have a good friendship with him. You still meet with him. And yeah, he's a he's a mentor in my life. Back then, I didn't know him that well, but then our, you know, when I, I did. So I'll make a long story short. I, I youth pastored at Brownsville for five years. Mm-hmm. Brownsville Assembly where the revival took place. I was one of the youth pastors there. Yeah. 2007, 2012. Then I did missions work to China. I was a missionary in China for about 15 months. And then about a year in, um, I can't, I kept getting on these dreams about doing crusades and seeing healings and miracles. And I, I had dreams about catching thousands of fish. And I knew God was calling me to crusading ministry. It didn't make any sense. Because I didn't know anyone except Daniel that did that type of ministry. So I sent him an email. I said, hey, Daniel, uh, I just want to reconnect with you. Um, you know, I feel called to do crusade ministry, but I need I need a mentor. I need someone to teach me. Would you be willing to be a mentor in my life mm-hmm. and teach me what you know? Maybe I could run with you for a year. So at that time, he is already working with Reinhard Bunky. Yeah, he he was doing yes, he was doing work for Reinhard Bunky at that point. Yeah, he was actually the successor at that point of Reinhard Bunky. Yeah, mm-hmm. so he's doing these massive crusades, like a million people, and so it was a big ask. So I emailed Daniel. I asked him. And I didn't, I didn't hear back for a month. So in that month, I actually applied to go to Bethel School of Supernatural Ministry, BSSM, because BSSM, at least I can learn about healings and miracles. But then Daniel eventually wrote me back. And he's like, Paul, I'm going through one month after one month. Well, so I thought, oh, great. He just thinks I'm one of those guys that want something from him. But it's very genuine because God was speaking to me, but I didn't know where to start. 
So he wrote me back and he said, Paul, I've decided to start an apprenticeship program, apprenticeship, and I want to take six guys from different parts of the world and you'd be personally mentored by me and it's for gospel crusades and if you want to be in it, you're in it. I'd love for you to be part of it. I think it would change your life. I said, I said, Daniel, sign me up. <laughs> and I was so excited. Exactly what you were searching for. NASCO, I was so excited that I couldn't eat for two days. Whoa. Because I was so excited. I just couldn't believe Yeah, 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 yeah. This is, excitement is becoming in your stomach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally. Awesome. Wow. And that's how your journey began about uh, the Crusades, right? Yeah. They, that one year at Christ for All Nations completely <laughs> changed my life. Completely. So you met Tarekhar Bonke there as well? Yeah, I met him. We had a mentoring time with him for the the six apprentices in him and like a four-hour mentoring time, which is incredible. And then a few years before he passed, I got to have a lunch meeting with him. Whoa. Just me and him and his assistant, Andrew Colby. And he let me record it through our meeting. And it's one of the highlights of my life. So you still listening to this? Like record? Yeah, 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 I have a transcript of it. Wow, awesome. Yeah, and he, he treated me like a father, you know, and just... He said he's, he's proud of me for how God was using me in the nations, and he prayed over me, he prophesied over me. And those, those, those two hours really, it was really impactful. And I'm so thankful for, you know, he's, he's, a, he's a forerunner in evangelism. And, and he, he's gone before us, and man, he's in heaven enjoying his great reward. You know. And now we're the next generation. Exactly. You're the next generation. Exactly. The people watching, you're the next generation. Who are the ones that God... You're the ones that God's raising up to be used in these end times. And I think Bonke shows, and Daniel Clendon, they show what's possible in God. Yeah, if one man believes in one God. Yeah, and it may not be with millions of people, and maybe with one person. Exactly. And maybe with 20, and maybe with 100. With God, everything is radical. I mean, uh, it can be, exactly like you say, it can be only one person, but God can do something through this one person. I've actually heard a story of missionary that went to one place for 30 years there to missionary. His wife died. He lost uh, half of his family, but only for one man to believe in Christ. Yeah. After that, he get actually angry on God. He, he leave this place. But actually, this one man was the door for the whole uh, village where he was living and mm. other villages around it and the town. And actually, through one man, he was like the key to for a hundred thousand to receive Jesus. That can be only one man, yeah. So I believe you know Will Hart. I've listened to one of his messages. I signed up for the school of uh, Heidi Baker Iris uh, Missionary School. It's all oh, right. cool. Yeah, it's nice. It's, it's but it's all my version of it, and we have uh, live uh, communication with Will Hart, and he was sharing. His message was about like, you know, people with uh, like Recker Bonke or uh, Daniel Kuller and there were some of the people that even they already passed from this world to be with the Lord. We're like the next generation and the next generation and we should carry, like we should, should we honor their work so we can continue it? Yeah. And like understanding the importance of the work yeah. Like the people before us were so serious about it. Yeah. They're so dedicated. And can we show the same thing? Exactly like you say. Well, yeah, you see, everything should grow in God, right? Every, yeah. Everything should multiply. Everything should grow. So an example in the scripture is Elijah and Elisha. So Elisha saw double the miracles of Elijah. Yeah. And his mantle was placed upon Elisha. So that means I believe Daniel will see double of what Bonke saw. Amen. And I believe that's biblical. And perhaps the people that Daniel mentored will see double of what he saw. Amen. Because everything everything should grow in God. Everything should yeah. multiply. But a lot of people, because of insecurity, because of a lack of sonship, lack of identity, often people's ministries die with the founder. Okay? Yeah. And there's no legacy. And then and then the next gener generation has to start from scratch. Exactly. And build. See, but Bonke built this ministry for 40 years. 40 years. It's a well oh. machine. And then Daniel's able to take that 40 years and take it to the next level, in my opinion. And with the giftings he has, not just a missionary evangelist, but he's got an incredible business mind and just very sharp. And I think um, 
Yeah, and it's, it's happening. They have a vision to re reach, reach another 150 million. Whoa. Uh, so in the next 10 years. I think right here, Bonke actually, he'll lead 17 million people to the Lord. Is that right? Something like that, yeah. Yeah. So they, I believe the annual calendar, calendar really can multiply it, which is like uh, 100 or uh, 144 million people to the Lord. Something like that. <laughs> it's like, it's so massive. I cannot, it's hard even to calculate it. Yeah. It's so much, which. But we, we just need to do our part. Yeah. You do your part. I do my part. We all have different giftings to people watching. Just do your part. Yeah. Just do your part. Reach, reach everyone one person at a time. Yeah. One person at a time. Not everyone is like Riker Bonke, of course. Like, not, probably not every one of us will reach 72 million. Of course. But we can do like the best thing that God gave us to do. And, and which is the most important thing. So let's let's come a little bit uh, a little bit in the start. Like you share about the Riker Bonke, how you have been in with him, Daniel Galenotka, but everything starts with one boy that wants to went to the beach. Yeah. <laughs> Sixteen years old. And then when I truly gave Jesus my entire life, Whoa. complete surrender to anything got along in my life but to be honest it was kind of easy to give Jesus my life mm -hmm. to be honest because I dealt with so much fear in my life and I felt like I always kind of felt less than you know I didn't feel like I had much in life anyways but my God if you want my life here it is I gave it to you use me however you want and so to be honest it was quite easy for me to give Jesus my life completely because I don't didn't feel like like he was what I was searching for my whole life and I finally found it and yeah, it was just, it was, it was easy for me to give Jesus my life. <laughs> maybe some people, maybe some other people, it's hard and more difficult. But for me, it was, it was very easy. But I, but without what you want, hmm? you felt what you wanted. Yeah, I found life. I found purpose. I found what life's all about. It's truly about knowing Jesus. It's not about fame, popularity. It's not about Facebook likes, Instagram likes. It's about truly knowing Jesus that's our purpose. Yeah. Amen. So, yeah. it sounds also how, how, you know, because it's really hard uh, for all of us. Like, you just share your story. You're one boy that wants to go to the beach, you know. And uh, for all of us, we want to uh, grow, I believe. For all the people that watch this, we want to grow in ministry and knowing God and all that kind of stuff. So how you should encourage the people because you know all these generals in faith, I can say. And you have you even believed that when God changed your life that you will know uh, people like Daniel Kalenda, even at the time when you know him, he was not uh, this guy, but like Reiher Bonke and all that awesome ministers and I, believe, I can say generals and the church history well so so i guess so i i, I wouldn't say it starts with surrender mm -hmm. giving jesus everything and i think it's so important to live a holy life and get any addictions out of your life any sin patterns you know and i, I believe in accountability and so i have throughout the my life you know i have an accountability partner if i screw up in an area I call him and I confess my sin. It's one thing to confess to God, which is we need to do, of course, you know, confess your sins. Um, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us, right? Mm -hmm. Cleanse of all unrighteousness. But it's also something if we're struggling with a porn issue or jealousy or pride or anything, you know, like it's good, I think, to actually confess it to someone because mm -hmm. it gets it out there and it gets it out in the open. It says, confess your sins to one another that you may be healed. And I think with this young generation, like Gen Z, how old are you, 20? Um, 19? I'm 19, yeah. Yeah, 19. But your generation has dealt with so much trauma, so much fear. And I think because of that trauma, that fear, a lot of people end up in addiction. Yeah. Okay, they end up because they want to feel better. And so they end up going to addiction, which leads to even more bondage and more like, crap. So exactly. The devil. But I think, so if you find yourself, if you're watching, if you find yourself in a trap, 
talk to someone, get accountability. I think that's very key. It's, these are simple things, but discipline, accountability, stay in God's word, and really, truly having a daily walk with Jesus, knowing him. See, all ministry, so you, maybe you're watching, you say, Paul, like, I want to be used. I want to do great things for God. All ministry must come out of the overflow of intimacy with God, truly knowing Jesus. Like people don't need more of us. They need more of Jesus. And gee, he lives inside of us. And when we stay connected to the vine, that's where the power is. Jesus, yeah. the power is in the vine. The power is in Jesus. Amen. And we're his branches, right? Yeah. And as long as we're connected to him, we will flow in his power. Amen. He said, abide in me and I in you. And you will bear much fruit. Yeah. So, so when we don't spend time with him, we disconnect ourselves from life. And then the Bible, it actually talks about, it talks about withered branches. Okay. There's lots of withered branches as Christians today, because, you know, at some point they stopped abiding and maybe they got prideful or maybe they got independent and nothing's happening in their life or ministry. Nothing's happening because they disconnect themselves from the vine. So as long as we're spending time with God, we're, you know, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. We put him first. Everything else will line up in our life. Mm -hmm. You put God first, here comes your ministry. Here comes your calling. Here comes your future wife, your spouse. You put him first. If you fall, if you fall in a trap, get accountability, get help, let, let go of your pride. Like we're living in the end times and God's pouring out his spirit and he wants to use the people watching. Yeah, exactly. But, but you have to more. you have to live get the sin out of your life. You have to live a repentant life. You have to live a holy life. And if you want to be used by God, I think one of the key scriptures is blessed are the pure at heart, for they shall see God. Mm -hmm. Like do you want if you people want to see God move in and through their ministry, they have to have a pure heart. Yeah. That speaks of purity of motive, purity of intentions. It speaks of being right before God. And people also, I believe. Yeah. Yeah, it's security uh, with so people as well. Your story is also how one young man who, like, you don't believe in yourself about this stuff. I can say. I mean, because you were going for other reason in Brazil, uh, yeah, where God changed your life. Like, yep. you don't even think about it, but you surrender your life to the Lord. Yeah, and this, I believe you're so good example of what God can do through someone who just surrender his life. Which is like awesome. You were uh, you were ministering, I can say, like all around the world. You just go to different places now, and uh, you met with the, uh, with Reinhard Bonke, your friend with Daniel Kulend, and all these awesome people. Which is so hard for people to believe that they can go to this place in their ministry, but you were just example, exactly like you say, abide in me, said uh, Jesus. Says. So just abiding in this in his presence abiding in him he will just take you and put yeah. you in this place yeah god is the great door opener I, I didn't do anything i just i just spend time with god and he it. opens up every see some people in ministry that try to push open doors that god's not opening yeah it's like you put him first and god supernaturally opens all the doors for for you he does the work did you have doors that you want to open and you were trying by your own power but god didn't want, didn't want to open that door yeah i think in the past sure yeah absolutely so you take wisdom from these stories yeah yeah i put god first i do believe in networking and connections i was just in amsterdam 2023 it's it's they have a vision it's a huge conference worldwide and they want to reach the whole world in the next 10 years they want every person to have an encounter with God in the next 10 years. That's a big vision. But um, but it's possible. Well, even in our times, because we're going to the end times, I believe. And so, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I believe for that vision to be fulfilled. Yeah. I was going to tie in something we said earlier, but I just I lost my train of thought. He said, Oh, like, sorry. No, no, no. You're fine. About right? no, the you're fine. He's about, he's about, yeah, it's about God opening doors. I believe in networking. And about God opening supernatural doors, but it's, so it's good to network. It's good to connect, but don't push doors open. Let God open the doors. Yeah. So instead of just trying to strive, just be, spend time with Jesus and say, God, open up every door you want me to walk through. Because there's the difference between good ideas and God ideas. 
Yeah. Good ideas are like, well, it's a good idea. But though good ideas often don't bear fruit. But God ideas insp- inspired in the right time and season will bear much fruit. So what's the key to reaching Bulgaria? God has a strategy. Amen. He has a plan. So we need to spend time with God so he gives us these divine strategies to reach people. Maybe for me in America, the Lord gave me a strategy of having Jesus festivals. What's a Jesus festival? We partner with all denominations, even Baptists and Catholics and anyone that tr- preaches the true gospel. Yeah. And we train the church in evangelism. And then we have a two-day event. It's a festival, music all day long, free giveaways. We'll share lots of testimonies. Fun for the whole family, big blow-ups, free food, everything's free. Whoa. And then towards the evening, I get up. I'm this like, is faith to organize everything for Yeah. Me. It's, it's yeah. very expensive, to be honest. Yeah. But God told me to do it. And then at the end, I'm going to preach the gospel. Mm. And I believe thousands will come and they have an encounter with Jesus. Amen. And what draws them? Free stuff. Yeah, free. And you know what? The, the model came from Asbury. Everything is free. Everything really? was free. Free pizza, free drinks, free this. It's, we like want Jesus. it's a way of honoring people in, in hospitality and hosting people, lost people. Jesus just preached to thousands of people and after that he fed, fed them for free. So That's a good point. Yeah. That's, <laughs> that, I actually didn't think about that, but that's really <laughs> yeah. but What I'm saying is that's the strategy for me in America and perhaps even Europe. Amen. To reach, reach these countries and so it's different for everyone. But again, the, but we get these ideas. I, you know how I got that idea? I'd be on a prayer retreat for a week. A week. I just spent time with Jesus. No, no, this is just uh, on my own in, in Orlando. I went on a prayer retreat and I had this idea. And then some con- someone contacted me from Michigan. And they, they said, Paul, would you come and, and have an outreach? I said, yes. God spoke to me the same thing. Whoa. And then the, God put it all together. I've got a coordinator. I've got a pastor overseeing a pastor's committee and it's all coming together and we're going to have it in like in a few weeks and I'm super excited. And this is when is God idea. It's a God idea. Just op- the doors are opening. The doors but- are wide open. We got the mayor that wants to come, the chief of police that wants oh. to come. There's even a US state senator that's interested in coming. So we'll see what God does, but it's very exciting. Amen. That sounds so nice. So yeah, just how God can use what so I'm uh, interesting to ask uh, also about, you know, uh, before we came here to make this podcast, uh, you shared that yesterday, uh, sorry, uh, this Sunday, you preached in one church, you saw 15 healings and stuff like this. And you were actually, your ministry uh, really shows the healing power of God, if I can say. Uh, you even share with me about uh, the one of the greatest miracles you saw so can you share with the people because you know here uh, the many people are actually scared even to pray for the sick you know uh, what will happen if the pe- person don't don't get sick like i think the problem that we should look for is what will happen if the people get sick you know uh, get healed uh That's, but yeah well it always takes risk yeah but when you take a risk that's where the fruit comes in. Amen. And some people will be healed and some people may not be healed. So, so this is the thing. And I'll share testimony in a minute. Please remind me to share testimony. Yeah. But th- this is something that may be a, a learning moment for some people watching. Uh, this is what Baki, is an example from Baki. Let's say he's got 10 people that were blind mm-hmm. on the platform. He's praying. The first one he prays for, they're not healed. The second one he prays for, they're not healed. The third, not healed, not healed, not healed. He, he prays for the, let's say nine people weren't healed. Let's say he will pray for the 10th person as if every other person just got healed. That's the way he thinks. So, so don't focus on what God isn't doing. Focus on what, I, what he is doing. So for instance, Amen. here's an example. When I was in my first, testimony. Cru- my first crusade was in Pakistan. And you know, I don't know if mm-hmm. like dozens or hundreds of people got healed. I can't remember. It was a long time ago. But I remember when I got off the platform and I was praying for people individually, I remember this this one girl was mute. She couldn't speak. And she kept going like, pray for me, pray for me, you know. And I, she was just, I just felt God's heart for her, but she wasn't healed. Mm-hmm. And I left the meeting so discouraged because I, I was focusing on the one that wasn't healed and I couldn't even celebrate the ones that were healed. So I think the key is this, to, to build our faith, 
focus at what God is doing, not what he isn't doing that moment. And that will build your faith to keep moving forward and believing God for more. So whenever I leave a meeting, I focus on what happened. I focus on changed hearts, changed lives, the healings that I saw. If they're not healed, you know what? It's still God's will to heal them. But I focus on what God did do. And that gives me faith to keep going. You sharing this uh, actually makes me to think about it. Uh, if our focus is put it on the people that are not healed, we cannot celebrate the move of God. Exactly. Which is, yeah, so good point because we should be happy for every miracle that we saw because it's it's never about what we do. It's only about grace. Yeah. We cannot uh, heal everyone. Like, like God gave us the authority, but he gave it to us by grace. Yeah. So we should celebrate the grace that God puts over our lives. Yeah. So I'll share with you a testimony. This is a cool testimony. Probably the highlight of the trip we had, like, uh, I think it's that a revival meeting we have. It's from the local churches here in Plovdiv. I don't know, maybe six churches gathered or something like that. It was very powerful. And I remember I prayed for mental disorders to be healed. I said, if you've got a mental disorder, put your hand in your head. I believe Jesus is going to heal you. So this girl, to share some of her story, she was 18 years old. Okay, she she had OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder. She had ADHD, which is attention deficit yeah. disorder. So her brain, you know, she would get stuck. Her brain was all messed up and she would get stuck thinking about certain things or like, you know, compuls- compulsions or like when it came to walking on, like walking like on a floor like this, she couldn't step on the cracks because it would mess with her brain. Wow. Comp- or like things like compulsive hand washing, things like that. And she was very depressed she would often cut and burn herself. Okay, she had like marks from cutting. Wow. She was on antidepressants. She had no peace in her mind. So she put her hand on her head. And when I prayed, she said, of course, it's Jesus. She said she felt like something like lightning or like electricity go through her body. Wow. And in that moment, she was completely set free. This, this heaviness, this cloud lifted. And she was in her right mind. And she got completely set free from OCD, ADHD, the depression left, and she's in her right mind. She shared the next day. She's like, Paul, I feel normal. I, I don't have this. The like, three healing took place in a. Yeah, system. I don't have these obsessions anymore. It's gone. I'm free. I'm free. Wow. Jesus set me free. And she was so happy. I took a picture and put it on social media to share because so many people deal with fear, anxiety, OCD, um, yeah. There's so many different mental things going on today from 2020. People are being tormented and Jesus is the answer. He sets people free. Maybe you're watching, say you're a young person, you deal with fear, anxiety. God's not giving you spirit of fear. He's giving you love, power, and a sound mind. So I, God wants to release that love into your heart. If we, we need to receive the Father's love for us mm-hmm. and then perfect love casts out fear. Amen. So... What was your first miracle or healing that you saw? Well, ministry? the one that sticks out, okay, and my ministry is flip-flopped, which <laughs> means most people start healing one person or they see one person healed. I saw my first healing I saw at a huge gospel crusade in Pakistan with thousands of people. I never saw <laughs> no, no odyssey. So I really stepped out in faith because I'd never saw anyone healed before then. So the, the one that sticks out to me that I remember is in my first meeting and this little girl came up with her father and the father testified that she had a large goit in her neck, like a large growth. And during prayer, I had a word of knowledge like I was healing a growth, a condition. And in front of their eyes, it shrunk down. It was like this and it shrunk down into normal. It was gone. It disappeared. Just in a few moments. Yeah, in, in, in a few moments. So that happened. This is one of your first... That was one of the first miracles <laughs> I ever saw. I went from seeing no miracles ever. I saw no healings. None. Brought to disappear. Yeah. <laughs> That's even funny because, you know, you, you cannot expect things like that. I, I guess you were so surprised. I was... I was I'm like, are you sure? <laughs> I was uh, more I was more in shock than they were. I'm like, are you <laughs> sure you're healed? She's like, yes, we're sure. I'm like, are you sure? <laughs> so, yeah. You it, know, I've heard... If you know this guy, David, uh, um, David Hogan, yeah, he uh, he was interviewed by Sid Roth, and uh, he said he asked Sid Roth, asked him, "What is your first miracle? Like how God begins began using in miracles?" What did he say? 
he said, he was so funny. He said, I opened my Bible, I read it, and I took uh, notes of every miracles that got created in healing. And I choose one. And Sid Roth asked, which one you choose? Raising the dead. And he said, when my uh, wife heard me, she said, okay, let's start from headaches or something, you know, something more easy. But he, he was so radical. He said, I want, I want to see the biggest one. If Jesus can, why not? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, 100%. So, and how that increased to the greatest miracle that you saw to your ministry? How did it increase? Um, I think if you're faithful in the small things, God, God will give you more. He saw my heart and I was faithful and he saw that I had purity of heart. I was doing it for all the right reasons. And then God gave me more. Whoa. And I also believe in impartation. So if someone has a gift, you know, it's very biblical. The apostle Paul, yeah, I think he told Timothy, I long to see you that I may impart to you a spiritual gift. Yeah, exactly. So I believe in impartation. So if you're watching, if you, if you see someone, you know, if you, if someone, if you see someone that has a strong gift on their life for miracles, healings, the prophetic words of knowledge, say, Hey, could you pray for me for an impartation? Yeah. You know, and I've had lots of people pray for me for impartation. So many, even at um, Amsterdam, I go to Claudio Friedson. Really? Archie, I'm like, can you please pray for me? I get on my knees. He releases the fire. <laughs> like, wow. He, he, and I, I believe I received some impartation. Um, I had Nathan Morris laid hands on me. Actually, Claudio phrase, he, he actually received his anointing through impartation from Benny Hinn. Wow. If you know the story. Yeah, it's so awesome because you know what's happened? He's, uh, uh, he's not from America. He's from, uh, from South America, but I don't, I'm not sure which country. Uh, but what's happened is that uh, he went to Benny Hinn Crusade. Benny prayed for him. He experienced God's power. Take back to his church, and he heard that uh, her secretary listened to Benny Hinn again. And he said that uh, on the next meeting, he will meet a person from the same country where Claudio is, hmm. and he will receive Benny's anointing. And Claudio fly again to Benny Hinn Crusade. He said, Benny, pray for me. Benny, pray for me. And Benny prayed for him. And Claudio came back. And when he went to his church, he just lifted his hand, like praising the Lord. And he said, everyone fall. I, I was, he said, I, I was not even expect. I just lift my hand, like to, yeah. to praise and everyone. Psh. And that's how he received it. So, Amen. And, I, and I love the manifestation of the Holy Spirit. But what I'm really after is a changed life. Yeah, and that's what they would say at the Browns revival. That the emphasis was the gospel, but there's lots of manifestation of the Holy Spirit. People shaking, trembling of the power of God, and it's actually very biblical. Yeah, you know, when when the soldiers went to arrest Christ, you know, three soldiers fell over. While they fell over, it was the power of God. You know, the he's, the prophecy of Old Testament, they would tremble and shake as they were the other. But when God was close, when He was and near, even at that time when. That's happened with Jesus. The Holy Spirit did not come yet yeah. to the world and still. But it's not about shaking. It's not about any of this stuff. Their focus should always be Jesus. But but the result of you shaking, the result of you falling under the power of God should be a changed life. Exactly. That's what we're after. Not just a manifestation, not just shaking, in the sense of shaking. If there is no fruit, we're looking for fruit. Yeah. Yeah. I like what Michael Culliano said. He said, uh, many times we went to church, uh, we see manifestations, and sometimes it's just not God. Why? Because you don't didn't come out changed. Yeah. And if you were not changed after this experience, yeah, th th this is what we're s searching for. So, um, if you're feeling comfortable about it again, uh, you said uh, you you told me that when you were small, you like you lost your father. Uh, and how that marked your life and how God changed you to go out of this situation, how God healed your heart. Would you like to speak about this today? Yeah, of course. Yeah, so I got born again in uh, beginning of July 1997. Okay, <laughs> and three weeks later, uh, make a long story short, my father dies in a tragic car accident. So it was, it was such a, a wide range of emotion, Nasco, because I... I just had this radical encounter with God and he changed my life and I'm way up here. And then three weeks later, it's just, it's just like, oh my gosh, my father dies. This is shocking. Yeah. And so it was hard on me, but I never blamed God because I knew his nature and character from being raised in church. I know that he was good. So I never blamed him. Um, 
I have questions, but I, I may have to make a decision. I chose to trust God with the things I didn't understand. So I know I'll see him again. He was a born again Christian. I know he's in heaven and I miss him. But, um, so I lost him, but God's placed so many men and mentors in my life to make up for that, to be, a, you could say like a spiritual father or a mentor in my life. One of them is Daniel Kalenda, even though we're on the same age, you know, he's really poured into me. I've had other mentors in my life, like Richard Crisco, who did it, I did a two-year internship with. He was the youth pastor of the Brownsville Revival uh, in Pensacola, Florida. People like Donnie Lewis, who's on staff there, and I'd be like Evan Horton and different different people that God's placed in my life along the way to learn from and to grow from. And I think, you know, ultimately, even if maybe someone's watched, you're like, well, I don't have a spiritual father. I don't have a father in my life. Because the Bible says you have that many fathers. That's what the Bible says. Yeah. But the good news is this. The Bible says that God's a father to the fatherless. Yeah. And he loves us. He cares for us. He looks after us. And he provides a protection upon us. Mm-hmm. But I believe what God's doing in these end times is he's, there's actually a scripture that I was going to read if I can find it. It's very powerful. And it's so important. See, for this fatherless thing is a big deal because Again, a father provides protection, right? So look at these statistics. I just have this on my phone. Mm-hmm. 63% of youth suicides are from fatherless homes. Mm-hmm. 90% of homeless and runaway, runaway children are from fatherless homes. 85% of all children who show be- behavioral disorders come from fatherless homes. 80% of rapists come from fatherless home, homes. 71% of high school dropouts come from fatherless homes. I think God's trying to tell us something. Yeah. That we need fathers in our life. But ultimately, he's he's our father, right? But this is the good news. As we approach the end of the age, this is what I believe God is doing. Lou Engel, we used to talk about it 20 years ago. He was way ahead of his time. He's a forerunner. He said, but it's Malachi 4, 5. Behold, I send you Elijah the prophet before the great and awesome day of the Lord. And he will turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the hearts of the children to their fathers, lest I come and strike the earth, the earth with a curse. So as we enter the end times, God's restoring relationship. Amen. He's turning the father's hearts to the children and the children's hearts to the fathers. And I think, it, again, it, when that happens, it, it creates a divine protection. And then we're able to be used in, in new ways in God. And and it's what God's doing in this moment. It's so important that that connection takes place. Um, but we need we need fathers. Yeah. We need spiritual fathers, spiritual mothers. If people like bro, Heidi Baker and like Daniel Kalinda and all these generals, they're really spiritual fathers and mothers also- to a generation. Yeah. But, you know, a mentor is like a spiritual father, a spiritual mother. Yeah. You know, we need mentors. I encourage you if you're watching to, to, get, to get get mentors, get people to speak into your life. It doesn't, it may not be someone like Daniel Kalinda, but there's someone that you, you respect, that's mature in the Lord. Someone you can learn and grow from and say, hey, would you would you meet with me maybe twice a month? Yeah. Get some coffee. You know, you know could you teach me what you, what you know? And that's very powerful. Yeah, that's awesome. So would you pray for the audience, for the people that are watching us about receiving the spirit of, of, fa- of a father, like from God, receiving God's love as yeah. a father, and also uh, for activation to the people that are watching us. So may God like use them in a similar way like he used you. Yeah. Uh, let me read the scripture if it's okay. Yeah. Ephesians 1, 5. It says that God predestined us for adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ. Okay. So God, God's chosen us and he's adopted us into his family. Okay. He's chosen us. He's chosen us to bear good fruit, good works. That's very powerful. Yeah, it is. So in, it says about the boss in him were chosen. So adoption's powerful, Nasco, because in adoption the parents choose the child. Yeah, they, they so we're chosen. That's the mind blowing. Yeah. He's chosen each and every one of us to be a part of His kingdom, and we're like it's a it truly is a family, and God is truly a father. It's all about family. Both um, well, church should be one family. Yes. So Ephesians one five says He predestined us for adoption to, sh- to sonship. Ephesians one eleven in Him we're also chosen. And I want to read one more scripture and then I'll pray. Um, gosh, there's so many things I could talk about this issue, you know. We should um, uh, do a second 
uh, like the second part of the podcast. Yeah. Well, how about when I come back? I will. There's a key scripture. Listen to this. Romans eight nineteen. For the creation waits in eager expectation oh. for the children of God to be revealed. So that means Bulgaria is waiting for you guys to come into the fullness of your identity as a son. Because when you know it, the Bible says we are co-heirs with Christ. We're an heir. An heir of what? An heir of the kingdom. Exactly. The kingdom of God. So we, when we know our identity, we, begin, we can begin to walk in it. So we need this revelation that we're a son, that we're a daughter. And when we have this revelation, we can begin walking the power of God and take back the land like Joshua. Mm -hmm. Joshua took back the land, but he knew, who, he knew who he was. He was a child of God, a child of the king. You know, Milton Johnson says this. He said, the whole focus of heaven is to reveal the father through sons and daughters. Well, it's a, a little bit even mind-blowing, like thinking about it. Yeah, God at truth. God has strategically placed us in this time in history for a reason, to show people the love of the Father. Yeah. So maybe you're watching and you'd say, you know, Paul, I maybe you don't have a father. Maybe you have an absent father. And to be honest, a lot of fathers haven't been fathered themselves, and that's why they actually, they're disconnected. They're emotionally unavailable. Because they, they haven't been fathers. They don't understand that. But I believe, you know, God is ultimately your father. And I'm going to pray for you. And I believe that you'll be full. Actually, I'm going to speak a blessing over your life. So, like, I want to turn real quick to Mark. If you have your Bible watching, maybe your Bible app, maybe turn to Mark 111. And, you know, when, when John the Baptist was baptizing Christ, you know, he... You know, he baptized him. When Jesus came out of the water, Jesus heard the voice of his father. It's very powerful. And, yeah. and this is what it's in. It's in Mark 111. Then a voice came from heaven and said, you are my beloved son. And in you, I'm well pleased. Everyone watching needs to hear this. And I think what the father would say to you today is this. You're his beloved son or daughter. He loved you, he loves you, he created you, and he's pleased with you. You know, just the other day, I actually said this to a man, maybe 30-some years old at a local church, and he's having problems with his spouse. She was very upset with him, but he felt like an orphan, right? Or the orphans have no identity, no purpose. Right. They have no direction. They, they don't know who they are. They happen to don't know who their parents are, and it can scar them the rest of their life. But sons and daughters, they know who they are. Their their confidence, they know who they are. Knowing they are in it. So yeah, so if we, if we don't know that, if we don't have this revelation, if we don't know that God's pleased with us, that he loves us, and he's our father, it can really affect our lives for the kingdom. Mm -hmm. So this is what God would say to you watching this again. That you're his son or daughter. He loves you. And he's pleased with you. Amen. So you have to believe it. Even in the midst of your struggles, you say, well, Paul, I'm struggling with sin. You know, listen, God sees every step toward him you're willing to make. Okay. Even in our brokenness, as long as you're surrendering your heart to God and you're not, you know, we can't give ourselves over to addiction and habitual sin and so on. But when you turn to him, even if you fall, guess what? You get back up and you keep moving forward. You never give up. You never throw in the towel. I believe in this moment, God's power is here. His presence is, is here for whatever you're dealing with, whatever you're going through. And um, so let's pray. If you, if you need this revelation that God is a father, that he's a father to you, a father of the fatherless, just like place your, your hand in your heart like this. And I'm just going to pray for you, okay? So Lord, I just, I just, am I, is it this camera, this camera, this one? Was you the one? Sure. So Lord, I thank you for everyone watching. And Lord, I just pray right now, for a revelation of that they're a son, that they're a daughter, that, that you're pleased with them. So I just release just, just a special anointing upon their life. I release a fatherly blessing upon them, that they're a son, that they're a daughter, that they're loved, and that, that you're pleased with them. So I just release that in Jesus' name. Uh, if you can just, just say this after me, just repeat this out loud. Say, Jesus, say, I receive 
Say, I receive the love of the Father. Say, fill me with your love. Fill me with your love. Some of you dealt with fear, anxiety, maybe trauma. I'm going to pray right now, and I believe you're going to be supernaturally set free from fear, trauma, in Jesus' name. So, so Father, right now, we just release your presence. We release your glory. I pray that every single person, any trauma, maybe abuse, physical abuse, mental abuse, uh, spiritual abuse, any type of abuse, sexual abuse, anything, I pray right now will be supernaturally healed by the love of the Father, that all trauma would be healed. So trauma be healed by the love of the Father. And I bind that spirit of fear that's perhaps tormenting you. I command that fear to leave your life. I break, I break all assignments against your life in Jesus. Every assignment is broken in the name of Jesus. So be free from fear, anxiety. Um, so you have uh, anxiety disorders. Be free in Jesus' name. Um, mental disorder. If you have a mental disorder, be healed in the mighty name of Jesus. So I bless your heart. I bless your mind. I pray the peace of God that surprises all understanding would guard your heart and guard your mind in Jesus Christ. So I bless you today in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for your prayer, for being with us. And I believe everything here was so, um, how I should say, so important that you're Mm. here. And uh, it can really build the next generation, the Gen Z for God. And we're so thankful Mm. for having you. And um, thanks for having me. You did great. Yeah. It's incredible. Yeah. It's yeah. just the beginning for this podcast. And yeah, it is so excited. I think God's raising you out for such a time as this. Amen. Thank you so much. So like Paul says, uh, I believe it's so important to share when you have some problems. And uh, I believe we both encourage you. Uh, if you have some problem, if you're going to something hard, just uh, go to your pastor Go to your uh, leaders in church, find them and speak speak with them about what you are going through, because we need one another. It's is yeah. the body is is the body of Christ. So yep. yeah, me personally, I experience it, and in, in, it is so important sharing to one another what we are going through. So I encourage you, you like you say, we encourage you in that so yeah be blessed we love you and we hope to see you soon bye bye Здравейте! Надяваме се видеото, което сте видяли да ви е харесало и ако това е така, може да го споделите с вашите близки и приятели и да го харесате, за да може да достигне до повече хора и да послужи за по-голямо благословение Благодаря ви, че бяхме заедно Обичаме ви!